Well, this is then the next engine off of the shelf of engines awaiting restoration, and uh, this is a Whedon. Now, before we get into talking about the specific Whedon, I just wanted to say a few things about the company. Um, if you subscribe to my channel and watch my videos, you'll, you'll have noticed that I do cover quite a lot of Whedon model steam engines. Well, there's there's a couple of reasons for this. Um, I really like them. That's one of the main reasons. Whedon produced an amazing range, a variety of different steam engines. Their, their engines weren't all the same. They 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 were hugely they varied hugely in in in. There were vertical boilers. There were horizontal boilers. There were steam locomotives. There were steamboats. There were locomobiles. There was a fire engine, and they just they. And it was an endless variety of model steam engines, which makes them fascinating in in my book. And secondly, they were a prolific uh, manufacturer of model steam engines. They started in the late 1800s and you know went all the way through until I think the 1950s. And, and there's over there's over a hundred different models in the Whedon collection that I know of. Uh, there may be more. Um, so th this is the reason why there are quite a lot featured on my channel, and I have quite a few in my collection. Now this. This beast is a Zawigan 49. These were made, uh, first made in 1898, uh, uh, all the way through until 1926. It's a beast. I mean, there's my hand. This is a, a huge boiler on this thing. Um, this one is in, in, as you can see, quite a poor state. Uh, they're mess fired. They, they use this, what they call this safety door. So there's a little door here where the meths burner is, is 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 actually it's all loose and floppy because it's the rivets come loose but basically the burner is held on the door like that you can pop the burner out of this ring which is the bit that's riveted to the door so that's going to need some attention but it, despite the fact it's in a bit of a state it's pretty much all there uh, there are a few things missing obviously the smokestack there should be a dummy governor on here levers for the whistle and the whistle top and the and the regulator valve here are missing and it should have two flywheels it's only got one also there's some problems in here because the the piston rod and rod end is loose and it is not actually connected to the connecting rod so that's all going to have to be stripped down and taken apart and as you can see there's been some sort of a very messy repair to the to the top of the boiler here i'm going to have to try and get all of that off and see what what's actually underneath and it'll have to be de-rusted and uh, paint stripped off and everything. But uh, it's quite a big project, but, but I'm, I'm quite looking forward to um, to getting this th this thing sorted out. Because as I said, this is a this is a this is a massive engine, really is. Cast iron base, uh, tin plate, uh, firebox. Uh, it looks like it's nickel plated boiler. So yeah, looking forward to getting this one this one up and running. Should be quite a nice engine when it's uh, when it's under steam. So there you go, Whedon Forty Nine. Well, I've done a little bit of work on the Whedon Forty Nine. It's been stripped down into its component parts. I had a go with a small kitchen blowtorch on the seam and all that horrible uh, solder that was around the top cap there and. Uh, just by using a screwdriver and melting the solder and scraping it off, I was able to get a vast majority of it off and you can now see that sort of rivet detail has come back up quite nicely. Um, I still need to check that the, the boiler obviously still seals, but it did clean up quite well. So that was that. Um, it all stripped down okay. Um, the burner has cleaned up very well. That spent a couple of days in a bath of vinegar the magic de-rusting solution. There's still a little bit to do. And I think there are some leaks on this. I think there are a few pinprick holes and there's a dent there, which I think it also leaks from. So that's gonna to need to be investigated. This is the burner support band. And again, that's that's cleaned up all right. I did wonder, uh, I did think because they were so badly rusted that I might actually have to make new ones because I didn't know whether there was any metal left, but it, it, they, were, it they seemed to be okay. So yeah, it's ready for the next stage, which is stripping all the paint off and uh, redoing the base and the engine casting. Uh, I did make one cock up though, <laughs> and this does happen occasionally. Um, in order to remove the crankshaft from the engine casting, I needed to remove the eccentric, and it was very firmly stuck to the shaft. 
So I thought, okay, well, I'll just apply a little bit of heat. Major mistake. Turns out that this is what is left of the eccentric. Now, I didn't realize it at the time, but the eccentric must have been cast out of something like white metal because as soon as I put even the slightest bit of heat on it, it melted. So <laughs> there you go. I still make, I still make cock-ups even now. It's not a major problem. I can make a new eccentric out of some brass rod. Uh, the eccentric on this engine is not complicated, it's simply a cir circular disc with an offset hole and obviously some method of fixing it to, to, to the crankshaft but I can, I can put a sleeve, I can machine it in like a top hat, hat section and then put a, a grub screw in so that's, it's, it's not irreversible but um, it does show you, you do have to be a little bit careful <laughs> when you're taking these things apart so right, on to the next stage well, we're back with Weedon 49, well, at least parts of it anyway. Um, and I've been doing some major work on the base plate here on the engine frame. Now, it, this is a good example of how you know, some model steam engine restores are fairly easy and others require quite a lot of work. And this one is certainly turning out to be one which requires quite a lot of work. To start with, they were both coated in my favorite uh, paint remover which is currently uh, oven mate oven cleaner which does a really good job on old paint and it did a really good job on these two as well probably removed 98 percent of the paint uh, that took a couple of hours to do that and it's a messy messy job but it has to be done the base plate was then wrapped in paper towels and soaked in vinegar and left overnight and the reason for this was that it was extremely rusty uh, on the underside here this was quite bad and also on the top around the where the boiler mounts which is this area here uh, the, the vinegar removed a good proportion of the rust but uh, then I had to spend probably an hour or so with various different size wire brushes to do the final cleanup I didn't bother with vinegar on the engine frame because it was too complicated a structure so basically and it wasn't as badly rusted as the base plate so basically this was just uh, paint stripped and then wire brushed to get it into this state. But uh, yeah, it took, a, it took a considerable amount of work to get it into this state. And it's now pretty much uh, ready for, needs a wipe down and it'll be ready for the uh, etch primer. But uh, yeah, it, the, sometimes these engines, they, they do require a considerable amount of work. Well, the restoration of the Whedon 49 is proceeding quite nicely. The basin engine, frame have been stripped to paint, de-rusted, uh, etched, primed and repainted and they've come out quite nicely. The boiler's been cleaned up, basically wire brush on the steel part of the base and then just hard graft polishing up the, the boiler. Obviously we have an, another flywheel now. Now I covered that, the casting of this flywheel in a separate video. It is very slightly smaller than the original because I had to use the original as a, as a pattern and obviously you get some shrinkage when you cast it but it's a hell of a lot better than just having one flywheel I say it's not quite the same size but I'm not worried about that it'll do the job nicely so yeah it's it's coming along it's coming along really well so the next job will be to machine up the eccentric which goes on here and uh, that's probably that will probably get done today with a bit of luck what else? Yes. Okay. Well, the burner. Now I've had a real good close look at this and it's pretty much gone. It, it, it has rusted through so badly that it literally has got so many leaks. It's, it's, it's not really worth attempting to salvage this, which is a shame. So I'm going to have to make a new one. Uh, haven't quite worked out yet how I'm going to do that, but that's a, that's something else that's got to be done. I've got some stainless steel tube coming to make the smokestack out of. The smokestack on this is about the same height as the base here. And it has a, uh, will have a brass uh, chimney cap on it. So that's got to be made. But other than that, it's, it's, it's pretty much there, really. Uh, what else do we need? We need a top for the whistle. And we need a dummy governor, which we don't have. But uh, that, that can all be sourced, hopefully. Yeah, uh, quite pleased with the way it's turned out so far. Looking good, and that all that's it. That's it. That's it for now, really. Right, we've got a little bit further with Weedon Forty Nine. It's all back together. I still need to make a new burner, 
and a smokestack and we need to source a dummy governor but apart from that it's all back together so let's have a look at what we've done recently we'll have to zoom in on this So there can, you can see the replacement eccentric. Basically it is a top act section with the, this, the inner diameter here, which is the smaller one, <clears throat> which is the same diameter as the inside of the eccentric strap. Then a hole was drilled off center here, approximately one eighth of an inch from the center. Now that was an educated guess given the diameter of the inside of the eccentric strap and the diameter of the crankshaft, but it proved to be fine because I have run this on crap compressed air and, 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 it, and it runs fine, which gives basically gives a, a movement of quarter of an inch for the piston valve. And then a sleeve was machined up to go over the outside and a hole was drilled, a clearance hole was drilled through the sleeve and then a tapped hole was drilled into the smaller diameter of the top hat section there. And that's an 8BA uh, grub screw in, in the middle of it there. So yeah. Basically, it's done. Uh, what I did realise once I'd done, <laughs> I'd done this was that now, of course, there is no way of driving the uh, pulley. Let's come back out again. Driving the little pulley here, which drives the, the, the dummy governor. But basically, what I can do is I can reduce the length of the 6BA locking screw in here and then I'll, I'll just turn a small groove in this outer sleeve here which will allow me to put a drive belt on and drive this. So yeah we're getting there we're getting there and as I said I've run it on compressed air so I know the actual thing runs so it's just the burner really that's the next stage before we can run it on steam. Well I spent yesterday making the smokestack and chimney cap for the Weedon 49 and it's turned out okay actually not too bad at all the bluing on the it's a stainless, it's a stainless steel tube here for the for the main part of the chimney stack and bluing is simply created using heat and engine oil so you heat the thing up until it's about a dull red color and then quench it in engine oil and you get quite a nice blue finish to to the smokestack so that turned out okay so really we're just left now with the burner which i've got to make a new one and uh, I need to make a little whistle top because that's also missing. But other than that, the Whedon 49 is very nearly finished. Thought you guys might be interested in my solution to the burner problem. Here's the original, which sadly has rusted through to the point where it, there is many, many leaks. So I was scratching my head <coughs> trying to come up with a solution. And what I've ended up with is this. Now this is an old tobacco tin. Now it's not quite the same size as this. It's deeper and it's not quite the same diameter, but probably very similar capacity. Uh, and all I'm gonna do is I've cut a couple of holes in the top and I'm just gonna uh, solder in a couple of uh, brass uh, tubes to make the wick holders. Um, and then I'm hoping that will be as good as, as, as the original and it's yeah, a fairly simple and easy solution. So I'm gonna get on with that now and we'll see. Well, the Whedon 49 is finally finished. It's taken quite a significant amount of work to get it into this state. Quite a bit to make for it. Uh, not least of all the second flywheel and the uh, eccentric the smokestack and smokestack cap all had to be manufactured and of course the new burner which is sitting in its rightful place in the uh, so-called safety gate there so i did think about painting the burner but in the end i decided to leave it bare metal because i just think it looks nicer with the blued firebox there so yeah uh, it's all ready to go so the next job is to get it steamed up Oh, I finished, I made the new whistle top for it today. So that's all done. Looking really good. I'm really pleased with it. Come out really well, but it was, as I said, a lot of work, but I've learned a few things along the way, which is always a bonus. So let's get it steamed up. Well, the burners are light. Has been for a while. So I think we'll uh, turn the steam on, see what happens. 
and there it goes under steam for the first time that is amazing i'm so pleased about that a little bit of wobble on the flywheels but nothing too serious i borrowed a dummy governor off of one of my other weedens for this it's just excellent Oh, I'm so pleased about that, that it actually runs under steam. That's fantastic. Got a bit of a problem with the burner. Um, the original wicks, one of them was really, really short. And the other one was quite short. So I had to put new wicks in, but I only had enough wick material for one wick. So we've actually only got one decent flame in there, unfortunately. But it's just about producing enough steam. Let's turn that off a minute. There we go. Let's see whether the whistle works. Well, not too bad, not too bad at all. Yeah, I'm pleased about that. That 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 is it's always good when it runs under steam. You know, you can run these things under compressed air, and that's one thing. But running under steam, that that is something else. Um, and it's a large boiler; it holds a lot. I put about 300 milliliters of uh, water in there. So, yeah, well pleased with that. Let's turn the steam back on again. There we go. Isn't that amazing? Weedon 49 under steam for the first time since I've restored it and running like a trooper. Definitely going to need to sort those burner wicks out. And it's just about making enough steam, but the, the, as I said, the, the flames are very low on the on the wicks. Let's turn that off. I'll open the burner tray so you can see what's going on. Well, I'll try and open the burner to see if, see what's going on. Yeah, see, so we've got a. We got a good flame on this one, which is the new wick, but a, a fairly low flame on that one. I can't really lift the wick out anymore because it will be out of the meths. So that needs to be sorted. I need to get some more wick, but. Oh, close that. It is running. Yes, I'm well pleased with that. So there you go, Weedon 49 under steam for the first time since its restoration. And apart from a little problem with the burner, we're, we're, running, we're running well. So I'm sorry about the length of this video. It's taken quite a long one for one of my restorations, but it was a lot to do. So hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. Cheers.